Thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk today. And it's a very good conference, very different from the one we attend normally. Um, so you said I am from Canada, but in fact, I am French. But I moved to Canada, so I will tell you about that. Oh, it's moving just by itself. Um, now, how do I go back? Can I go back? No, I cannot. <laughs> go back. It's okay. It's fine. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so, basically, today I would like to talk about uh, the Canadian phytobiotics and how it can help to uh, preserve the livestock industry that is very uh, prominent in, in Canada where I'm living now. So, now. Um, so yeah, so I put a slide from Paris to Lethbridge uh, because in 2007, uh, there was a big event in my life. And um, maybe you are asking why, because I married a Canadian. I met my husband in Switzerland when I was doing my postdoc and he brought me to Canada. Um, so we speak about adaptability and yes, I had to adapt to that. Um, so which is great, I discovered you know, many things, uh, uh, thanks to him. So I basically was at the Pasteur Institute, uh, yes, for many years. And in 2007, I was a bit sad, I must say, to leave the Pasteur Institute and to this big community uh, and to move to uh, Lethbridge, where I worked first with my husband at the University of Lethbridge. And then after that, I developed my own project in 2015. Um, so I direct the microbial research laboratory now, and I also de do some teaching because this is part of our job in Canada. So um, now moving, I would like to take you to Canada. Um, and so this is Canada, and I thought that I was living in a big country in France, and I realized that it is really tiny. Um, so we are living in Lethbridge, which is here very close to the American border. Um, and so this is a, a very special uh, place. And for many years, I realized, I thought, well, we need to save humans. Humans are important. But then I realized that by living in Alberta, we have more chicken, we have more beef, cows. And so maybe we should switch from human medicine to, um, to basically trying to save chicken and, and, ca and cows. So this is what I saw, which is done also in France. Uh, they are in these uh, open barns all together. And so this is good, but this is basically um, helping to um, basically um, raise disease, infectious disease, transmit infectious disease. So uh, for many years, uh, the, the industry, the farmers were using antibiotics. So this was good, it was preventing the disease, it was also promoting the growth of the animals, which is a very economical value for that. So for many years, and so this is in the States, so this is from 2013, uh, we had 80% of the antibiotics that are used for the livestock and 20% for the humans. So life was good, everything was good, but the problem is that now we have an, an issue. Or oh, it's not now, but it has been for many years. So which is the antibiotic resistance? So this is a major concern, and this is the World Health Organization who is saying that. So basically, I don't know if you are a microbiologist, some of you are, uh, but uh, just to summarize, um, probably you have heard about superbugs. And so the superbugs are basically bacteria that are not killed by antibiotics. Why this? Because they are slightly different. So uh, are they new? No, they are not. Even Alexander Fleming, who discovered penicillin, realized that antibiotic resistance was present. And we had to be careful on the usage of antibiotics. So what, it, what it's happening is that um, before the antibiotics arrived, and it was in 1940, if I remember well, uh, we had resistant bacteria in the population. But we were not using antibiotics, so it was fine. But over the time, we were using antibiotics quite a bit, as I said, for the livestock industry, for example. And so we are selecting, it's a natural selection. We are killing the, the bacteria that are not able to resist, and we are, whoops, ah, 
And we are basically um, giving the advantage to these resistant bacteria that are growing and growing. So today we have this population that is huge of antibiotic resistant bacteria. And I will not go into the details, but just to say two things. Bacteria are really cool. They can exchange their genetic material. So it's a bit like you sitting beside someone, look at your neighbor, and then you can exchange your genes. So they can do that. I don't think we can. Um, but, uh, and also the bacteria can divide very quickly. Not all of them, but some of them. So all of that means that today we have an issue. And we, lo we spoke a lot about issues, and this is another one. Um, so this is the World Health Organization was saying, well, if we don't do anything, by 2050, 10 million people may die of infectious disease caused by resistant microbes. So I, I tried to look for how many persons died from COVID-19, and I found 6.9%. Uh, but apparently, it's even more than that. So 10 million is, is, could be uh, really bad. So, um, so this is what it is expected, um, and it's not in certain countries, it's all over the place. So we cannot escape that. So basically, we have an issue. So um, now, what can we do? Well, this is the World Health Organization who's saying, well, we need to prevent, prevent the infection, okay? So uh, there are some things that are done. Education is one of them, trying to educate people about microbiology, about these issues trying to reduce the usage of antibiotics, and um, some of them are not maybe, uh, especially the ones that are used for humans. Uh, so there are some measures that are taken, and then since December 2018, the farmers cannot use certain antibiotics to prevent infectious disease. So um, it's good, but don't forget, we need the proteins also to eat. So they are, they are in a really bad situation now. We cannot also promote the growth of the animal, which is probably okay. Um, I think there is a timer on my slides. Uh, so, and another one is to find new antibiotics and also alternative solution to antibiotics. And this is where I would like to focus now. So finding new, anti new alternative solution to antibiotics, I propose, I thought, well, well I'm in Canada, I am in Alberta, and I am surrounded by these plants that are not huge, that they are tiny, but they have not been studied. So um, the plants, as you probably know, are basically used for the source of many medicines. So if you think about aspirin, so this is coming from willow, taxol for anti-cancerous treatment, this is coming from taxis, and there are many more. Um, we are also in, uh, in Lethbridge, very close to uh, a reserve of indigenous people. And so we are in contact with them. And they use plants to treat certain medicine and uh, disease. So uh, basically, it's a bit annoying. <laughs> um, so uh, basically, we, we looked at these plants and we thought, well, there is no canine plants that are used as phytobiotics for the livestock industry. They are using thyme, oregano, some of them, garlic, that are produced elsewhere than Canada. So as René Dibault was saying, we need to think globally, but we need to act locally. So this is what I am trying to do. So Alberta again. So I spoke about this province. So we are living here, and this is the prairies. The prairies are huge, and France is tiny, in fact. Huh? So in the prairies, and this is now happening today or, or at this period of the time, where all the flowers are blowing. And I was almost hesitant on coming to Paris uh, to, to this conference because of the flowers, because you cannot miss the season. The season is extremely short, but there are tons of flowers. So these flowers have been used by the, by the indigenous people, some of them at least but they have not been used uh, in the Western science to find out what are the molecules that are active eventually. And other things that I would like to mention is that this is the prairies. We are very close to Waterton, but this is also the prairies. They have been used to grow our crops. So uh, now there is only 3% of the prairie plants that remain, so we need to preserve them. 
So by studying them, by knowing what they have inside them, we, we propose, and I'm doing that with my husband, Dr. Augustin, who is in the, in, the, in the room, we propose to, uh, that we will be able to save these uh, this plants. So the goals of my lab is basically to try to find some Canadian phytobiotics with antibacterial activities to continue to prevent the infectious disease in the livestock industry, to also eventually find some um, to, to find something local, and to find some new crop to, to our province. Because another thing is that the soil, if you if you cultivate always the same plants. The microbiome of the, plant, of the soil is getting less and less diverse, which is not very good. Um, so, and eventually, of course, you know, if I can find some uh, new antibiotics, it will be so good, but it's good to dream. Huh? Um, so, then the other thing is to train the next generation of scientists. I'm getting a bit old and I need to pass on to the next generation. So, this is the, the, the goal of that. So, what we do? We basically go outside, and it's at the time at, uh, from uh, May to um, July about, uh, and we walk a lot, in fact, to collect these uh, this plants, and we collect in a sustainable way, so we don't destroy the land. We collect under permit. We uh, put some numerical number, and you can see that here in this little vial for confidentiality and for the easiness as well. So we collect the plants, we separate the different parts, leaves, flowers, stems, etc., and we extract the molecule with uh, some solvent. We uh, remove the solvent, of course, and then we have this dry material that are ready to be tested for different purposes. For myself, it's for antibacterial activities. For my husband, it's for uh, some anti-cancer drugs, antioxidant. And so we developed this, um, this Prairie to Pharmacy program in 2013 at the University of Lethbridge. So coming back to the microbiology part, um, just a uh, very few words. Uh, what I do is that I put in contact the plant extract with the bacteria. So I can choose the bacteria of interest. And I use these 96 well plates that allow to do a lot of testing. We don't use a lot of materials, in fact, to test the, the activities of the plants. Um, and we do everything in triplicate, so we can do all the statistical analysis. And so the principle is that uh, when the bacteria are growing, so this is the media for the bacteria, it's clear. And when the bacteria grow, it becomes cloudy. So this is very simple, and so this piece of equipment, which is a, a pleat spectrophotometers, is basically reading the cloudiness. So the more cloudy it is, the more bacteria you will have. So we expect, we look for things that is keeping the, the media very clear, if you want. Huh? So uh, just one graph, we have tons of them, but just to show you some of the examples of results that we have found, is that uh, here you have different plant extract, and uh, as I said, so the optical density is here. The more cloudy it is, the more bacteria we have. The bacteria, this is normal, uh, have to adapt to their media. So this is called the lag phase. So there is no growth. The, the, the line is, uh, pl is flat. And then it goes into exponential phase and stationary phase. So this is the normal growth of the bacteria for Staphylococcus aureus, but for many bacteria as well. If I put my bacteria with a different extract, uh, and you have the names here, uh, with four of them, we see absolutely nothing happening. So no growth, nothing is growing for 18 hours. So this plant extract are basically avoiding this bacteria to grow. I put this one just to show you that some of them are lowering the growth of the bacteria, but with a delay. So here we have a lag phase of uh, about three hours. And here it's about uh, 13 hours. So 10 hours uh, extension, which is very good, as we remember at the beginning, prevention. If we can prevent the infection or report, this will be uh, very cool. Just here, uh, this is for oregano. So some of the, the plants that are, have been used by the, the poultry industry. Uh, so if you compare, this is oregano and compared to the extract that we have made in our plants. So uh, the next step after that is to find, okay, which one 
to, uh, to select. We take some criteria for that. We look for plants that are active at a very low concentration. So this means that we'll need less plant extract, uh, uh, which would be good. So this is just an example of one uh, where we have uh, uh, the, the, low, the minimal inhibitory concentration, which is 62.5 microgram per ml, but we have some that are at 15 microgram per ml. Another criteria that we take in consideration, and we do that in collaboration with Roy Goldstein, is that we look for the uh, absence of cytotoxicity using human cells or chicken cells. And also the last part is that they are easy to grow uh, because the idea would be to uh, have a crop production for these plants. So basically, um, this is just not all the plants because it would be too big, but just to give you an idea, so this is a representative of the gram-positive bacteria, Staphorus, and Acinotobacter bomani is a gram-negative, so two different class of bacteria. Um, if you are familiar with the bacteria, these are the escape bacteria, so they are part of this, is, uh, this group for which we are looking for a uh, solution. And we have in red uh, the uh, percentage of inhibition of uh, this bacteria, and so we have many candidates, and they belong to different plants family. So this means we think, we are not botanists, that they have different molecules probably, okay, so different solutions. Now, if we are interested by the molecule themselves, we were able to make the demonstration in collaboration with uh, someone at UBC in Vancouver, so Dr. Raymond Anderson, who is a natural product chemist, and that we can do the, the um, guided, the bioactivity directed fractionation. And sorry for that. <laughs> uh, so we were able to find from one extract three antibiotic molecules that have been isolated. Are they new? No, but their activities are new. So we hope that with all the candidates that we can find some really interesting molecules in collaboration with UBC. By doing this research, also we observe another thing. Uh, that was um, the clumping project that we called. So by looking at for antibiotic activities, we were able to see that some plant extract are basically clumping the bacteria together. And so uh, this is now uh, the, the part of the work of my master's student, Nadia And, who is finishing this summer. And so she did the characterization. I didn't put all the results because it would have been too long. But uh, this is basically what we see. So if you remember, this is the media alone. This is the bacteria alone. And bacteria with certain plant extract will have this clump. So you can see that uh, the media is clear around it, and she was able to characterize or to quantify the number of bacteria present in the clumps, and it arrived at very high percentage. So we think that by an over with this um, particular activities, and it's not a biofilm, we made the demonstration of that, is that we will be able to clump the bacteria that are in the wastewater treatment. So if you think about feedlots, there are lots of bacteria that are leaving the farm due to the number of uh, bacteria that are very close together. So this is uh, published in certain, uh, in certain uh, publication. So this is uh, another way to try to find a solution to avoid using antibiotics. So another thing, and this will be the last one, is that we are very close to the blood uh, reserves, so we are uh, in contact with the Blackfoot people. So this is here myself, just during uh, the, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was a bit, uh, it was a bit difficult to, to meet, but this is uh, William Singer III, who is a knowledge keeper, he is fascinated by plants. He is trying to restore the prairie into, um, into the reserve by collecting the seeds, and he, he developed just recently the Nappy's Garden. Nappy is their kind of god. Um, and so uh, by also being in contact with uh, the First Nations, we, we hope to basically compare the result coming from the Western science to the traditional medicine and to have this collaboration and to uh, bring some students into our labs as, as well as we do. So basically, um, just to conclude, uh, I think we have established a unique plant extract library 
to find different me uh, medicine or uh, solution to different problems. Uh, we have uh, identified some uh, Canadian plant extract with antibacterial activities, some bacterial extract, uh, some plant extract with clamping activities. And by doing that, we hope to be able to find a local alternative solution to antibiotics for the livestock industry. Uh, by doing this as well, we hope to um, develop a new crop production that will be adapted to our climate that will need less water, for example, because the prairies are really, really, really dried. And so, um, and also, uh, we, uh, we will be basically starting to test uh, two of the plants in chicken with uh, Dr. Uh, Douglas uh, Corver, uh, so for an in vivo testing and for eventually to uh, basically use these plants for an alternative solution to uh, the antibiotics and to give them some solution to a problem that they have today. So these are the students that were part of the, the study and the collaborators that are uh, basically very helpful for this project. Thank you. Thanks very much.